Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to video number four in the restoration of this uh, Mende 250-9, the one that left us uh, glowing with the short circuit somewhere. Now, I've been away for a while, as you may know, if you follow the channel. By the way, thank you guys for all the good wishes while I was away. Yes, I did get tanned. No, I didn't get burnt. Burnt literally and figuratively. There were a lot of fires where I went in the north of Portugal, but uh, we were fortunate enough to, to avoid those. One or two of them were close, but uh, nothing dangerous. So thank you for your concern. Thank you for your wishes. What I'm doing now is I've been thinking about this radio with the with the short that's coming and going, and um, I decided to try and figure out what it is. I've got some more stuff to do. I've got cleaning to do. I've got um, alignment to do. So without further ado, let's get cracking. But before we carry on, I just want to tell you about the sponsors of our video. They are PCBWay. You can find them on PCBWay.com. Links are in the description below. They're having the 8th anniversary promotions right now. So whatever you need, just jump to this website and uh, see what they have there for you. Something else they've launched is a um, new service called a one-stop solution, which is uh, contract manufacturing that allows you to produce an entire range of product or range of products. They'll offer all the services required. So they'll do the product design, development, engineering, and so on. They're experts at printed circuit board manufacturing, component and technical part procurement, turnkey operations, CNC machining, everything else that you may need to get your product out there. They've got it. So go and visit them. And once again, I want to thank them for their support. I think I might have mentioned probably one or two too many times that I don't particularly like dealing with dial strings. And the other thing I may not have mentioned as much as I should have is I don't like intermittent faults. Intermittent faults are a real bummer because you just can't get to the solution if you don't find the problem. And we had the problem of that uh, the current just spiking all of a sudden. It was working perfectly well and suddenly those uh, dim bulbs just went totally bright, which means there was some sort of uh, intermittent short coming up here. And if you recall, I would flip this up and it would disappear. And anyway, since I got back, I've been leaving this thing on for a long time to see if this thing would come back and it just hasn't. So I decided to get going on the other stuff that I needed to do. And one of those things was the dial cord. If you recall, when I rotated counterclockwise, this thing was coming to the right. When I did it clockwise, it was going to the left. It doesn't make much difference as long as you know the convention, but it just doesn't feel right. So what I had to do was to correct that. Now you can see counterclockwise moves left, clockwise it moves right. Perfect. So how do I did it? How did I do that? Well, I have no uh, drawing, no uh, diagram for this dial string arrangement, but this part is obvious. The cord coming down here going anti-clockwise is now being removed and is going clockwise just around this, uh, you know, the inside of this uh, of this knob. So we've got that sorted out. The other thing you can see obviously is the dial glass. This dial glass just needed some serious, serious cleaning. Very careful cleaning because I wasn't sure whether that, uh, whether the markings were decal or not. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to be. So I was able to actually wash the back of the dial glass. There was a lot of grime on there, front and back. So we've got the dial glass in perfect condition as well. I've also put this layer of, uh, this is double-sided tape with the one side, uh, you know, not exposed because this glass has no real padding to protect it from the, uh, from the metal hooks that hold it, which is uh, which are over here and that rests down there. The other thing I realized is they had a little uh, spacer down here because this glass has to be raised a bit or you get a problem of this thing scraping on the top of that, uh, of the spindle. So I put a, a little piece of kebab stick that I cut to size. You fit it in there and then the uh, the tape goes around it, gives it a little bit of a of a lift. And what they had there was some sort of sponge which was completely rotted as was all the tape around here. So we've got that uh, looking good as well. And then just for good measure, I finished cleaning the uh, chassis. It's all clean now all the sides. I've also gone over it with a very, very thin layer of WD-40, 
I just uh, sort of paint it on and then wipe it off. I find it gives it a really protective coat, but it also gives it a beautiful gleam, <laughs> which is cheating, but I like it. So I've done that. So what we've got now is we've got this radio looking pretty spiffy. Everything that needs to be swapped out, I believe, is swapped out. I just need to find out what the problem is with that, that excessive current spike that we're getting. And I'm just going to keep at it. I'm just going to keep leaving it on. And when it spikes, hopefully I can get it to repeat itself. So what I need to do now, I think, will be an alignment. The instructions on this particular radio for the alignment have actually, have actually been sort of compacted into the schematic as well. So according to those instructions, we have to adjust these two guys. That one there, that one there, that one there, that one there. That's it. Those are the two IF transformers, the first and the second one. And they're very easily accessible from the top here. I'm not sure whether they are tightly... I don't think they are. There's actually a little string on there, so I don't think there's a lot of wax on there. I think maybe they were even a little bit loose, which is why someone puts a bit of string in. But I, wanted, I want to inject the signal slightly differently on this one than I usually do to see if it works. Let me show you what I mean. The IO frequency on this thing is a little bit unusual again. It's uh, not 455 as most of the American radios are. It's not 460 as most of the German radios are. This one's actually 468. I don't recall whether I've had one of these. It makes no difference. It's 468, so that's what we're going to feed in from the signal generator. But instead of feeding it into uh, the grid one of ECH of the ECH81, which is the usual thing, you know, the mix oscillator, you go underneath and you feed it into there through a decoupling capacitor a DC blocking capacitor rather, and also probably through quite a bit of attenuation because you need a very small signal. I'm going to try something different. I have a shield over here. This is a tube shield and I've, I've wound some wire around here just to make contact the shield to this wire over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shield over the ECH81 and then I'm going to connect the um, signal generator to it and to ground, okay, which is sort of anywhere on the, on the chassis. There we go. So what I've done is I've actually capacitively coupled the signal coming in into the shield. That should work. It should work because what you normally do with the, uh, with the um, FM tube is precisely that. You'd normally just lightly couple, they call it, to the uh, FM tube. This is not the FM tube. This is the, the mixer oscillator for the AM. So I'm going to try that and I'm going to feed the 468 kilohertz into here and see if we hear it. If we do, I might start using this method because first of all, it doesn't require any attenuation because it, it's not a direct couple to the, um, to, the, to the mixer input here. It's uh, lightly coupled and what you're getting really is you're inducing that signal into the tube, which means that it'll go through and be tunable by this IF transformer, this first one, and then the second one going through to the end there. So if I can do this and it works well, this is certainly a lot easier than, you know, having to find the pin at the bottom. Sometimes you have to solder a little wire at the bottom to make it easier to get to it. And this might just become my go-to method. I might even make a, uh, a, you know, more complete or more professional uh, shield cover on here so that I can just connect the uh, signal generator to it. The signal level will be quite high. I'm not sure how high it's got to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it like, I don't know, 10 milli, 10 milli volts RMS and see what it's like. Now this is coming directly from the signal generator. There's, it's going through no capacitor because the lightly coupling doesn't do a coupling. It's just a capacitive coupling in itself. And it doesn't need attenuation, I don't think. We'll see just what sort of level we need. And then we'll start adjusting these uh, these cores to see if we can uh, peak it. So let's get this set up. Right, 468 kilohertz. I've got um, 10 millivolts. I'm not sure how much that'll have to be. I'm going to put modulation on. It's AM modulation. Uh, the frequency, well, 400 hertz, 600 hertz, whatever you want to hear. And I'm going to give it 30%. And we're going to hit it. And the signal is here. I'm going to put this over the ECH81, connect that to the ECH to the uh, shield, 
and the ground will just go to the chassis somewhere. The speaker is coming in here. I've got this, these two connected to the speaker terminals. I've got that on speaker and that's coming to the AC voltmeter, which I put on AC. I'll put it on 0.3 volts. I'm not sure what I need to put that on. That's just going to monitor the uh, speaker output. So that should all be fine. Okay, I've got everything set. I've got the volume on max and I can't really hear it. So that means my signal is too low. So I'm going to up it to 20 millivolts. I can now hear it. 30. I'll leave it at 50 millivolts RMS. It means we get a fairly clear indication on here. This is on uh, 0.1 volts full scale, which is a fairly low signal, but we can hear it through the static. And now I'm going to start here. There's my peak. I've got a bit of an improvement. Let's try this one here. No, that was perfectly peaked. Go back to this one. That's peaked. Now I'm going to go to the other one and do the same thing. I've got a bit of an improvement. That's a peak. I'm going to drop the signal level just a bit to 40 millivolts. Here's my peak. Just adjust that one again. I've peaked it. Simple as that. My little trick of using that shield seems to work quite well. And I might be using this as a regular, well, option because it is so much simpler. I didn't even have to turn this up upside down because both of these uh, adjustment cores are on the top. These particular IF transformers, I've just discovered, are very, very easy to operate. They are quite loose. I was warned that they can get stuck or can be stuck. Fortunately, these were not. But even if they were, everything's on the top. Everything's accessible. You don't have to go through the underside. And that's just another reason to simplify everything by putting the signal in through that shield. So that's good. We've aligned the IF on the, um, on the AM. How simple can it get? And so far, I still have not got my, my dim bulbs flashing like crazy, which, I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but I really did want it to happen because I do want to find that fault. It's always a bit um, distressing when you, when you just cannot find what's wrong with something. And uh, you find it out, you find out what it is when you've got everything back in the cabinet and it's all set up. So, okay, IF alignment done. Well, it looks like I got my wish. Watch this. I was uh, just preparing to do a um, an RF alignment when everything just went very, very bright. You can see the lamps uh, over there. And what I've done is I've actually disconnected the uh, B+. I uh, removed the two, uh, the two connections to the selenium rectifier. So the secondary is coming out just by itself. It's not feeding anything and we've still got the short. So it might be the uh, power transformer that's shorting internally, but I'm not going to arrive at that conclusion just yet because I need to do some more testing. I actually removed the secondary so that the secondary is open on the one end. It still lights up. I removed the heater connections. So it still lights up. I just wanted to make sure that the secondaries weren't uh, intermittently shorting. Doesn't seem to be the problem. It's in the primary circuit. 
And the the iron, the strange thing is I'm measuring. Let me switch that off. I'm getting nervous here. Okay. What I'm measuring when I uh, when I take the, the power socket and measure across it, I'm measuring seven, 47 ohms when this thing's set to 240 volts. Now that's not unusual. I actually thought it was a bit low, but then I checked with some of my other ones. I've got another Grindich here that's 46 ohms. So that doesn't seem to be the problem. There's something something strange probably happening in this um, in this wiring back here and maybe back here so what i'm gonna have to do is just to dismantle this whole thing if necessary i can probably find a donor transformer this is not too difficult to find i might have one lying around or from an old radio that uh, that's not going to be used uh, anyway i've got to look into this and right now Right now, I'm not going to be able to do that because I've got stuff to prepare for my return from my vacation. So uh, I'll probably be doing this early next week. We've done the IF alignment, which I wanted to do. So I'm going to uh, stop this video now. I know it's short, but I need some time to look at this carefully without, uh, without any stress. You don't want to mess around with this when you're stressed out about other stuff. And I am because I'm going back to the office on Monday. So I've got stuff to get in order after the vacation. I need a vacation after the vacation. So I want to thank you for watching. And uh, once again, just um, thank you for all your good wishes on my on my kidnapping saga, my vacation. Uh, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you back soon. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, please do so on Patreon. Bye for now and stay safe.